stick a source here, and today we're going to start working on this mess. Uh, this was a go Gecko Ranger Blue, sorry, you escaping me for some reason, uh, that my supports in the front failed, so none of this was printing correctly, so I just cut it, sliced it again, cut the top, cut the little piece of in the front, and we're going to put her back together. Hopefully she should look good as new. Um, but if anything, this will show you how you can salvage a uh, trick failure. Oh boy, I almost totally ruined it. But uh, it was a little too far that I felt like it was fixable. It was only missing about two inches on the sides, and that's not too bad to fix. Um, and it lines up pretty good. We'll do a little bit of fixing, but I'll show you how I do that. Okay, so here's this Geki Blue. Uh, again, when I printed it, for some reason the supports in the front didn't uh, print. So there was no supports under this. And it was just printing in there. And this printed pretty far, so I decided to keep it. Uh, the problem with it though was it did it overnight, so I didn't exactly stop in the time to stop it from printing some of this under here that supports so the sides went up because this was fine but nothing in the front here printed so when I sliced it down from where it was um, I would have had to print it at a weird angle to possibly get the part here in front it didn't print so I just put it in mesh mix well my mesh mixer and I sliced it again got this little part and just printed this separately uh, not everything's gonna line up it should be pretty close hopefully uh, I mean that looks pretty okay to me you're gonna have seams there's really nothing you can do about that but we can fill those in that's not a problem again most people probably just uh, reprint this but it's not a huge deal kind of I like kind of see if I can make it look okay You'll see my Soldier Green video. That one was in half, and I think it turned out okay. This one won't be as bad looking as that one. Uh, I didn't get all the supports off this yet. Because these ones kill my hand. I don't know. But, so we're going to put this together. Try to. Now, I might have cut it a little too high when I printed the top part. So if we put it together here, it's just slightly off. But what we're gonna do is line the back up and anything like in here or right uh, where the visor is that doesn't quite line up. We'll just fill that in with a little bit of uh, epoxy sculpt. So we're gonna make sure the back's lined up though. Because then the actual back of the helmet will fit. If we if we line it up where the parts line up. See that overhang there? That's no good. So all I usually do for this is use a soldering iron. I can move this a little bit so you see better. Uh, I did have a wood burning tool. It died. It was just a cheap uh, Harbor Freight one for like ten dollars. I need to get a new one because it lasts me a good while. But I liked that better personally. We can make this work. I might tape the side here, find tape. So we'll tape the outside, best we can. We'll put it this way before. someone to help you with this, it's a lot easier. Let me tell you. Okay. 
Okay. That should be alright. And if we take the other side here, we should get some stability. Things always want to line up. Uh, it could be that this shrunk a little bit. It's not as wide as it needs to be, but we should make it work. So be careful so it doesn't move, but that's what we're working with here. Now I'm going to take soldering iron. I don't know if you can see in here, but right where it meets, we're going to weld these pieces together. And we might go back in and add some more filament to the back here, melt some in, but this should be okay. I don't know how I can show you this the best. So what we don't want to do is have this come apart again. Right here's where our brake is. Hope you can see some. Now, once you melt together, you can't just let go. You gotta wait a little bit till it cools back down. There you go, there's that. It's one side done. Now I would call this just tacking it together. And you can also glue this together and then weld it. It gives it a lot more strength. Um, super glue, you heat it up, it, it uh, gives off an awful smell. I don't like doing that, it burns your eyes. I mean, you probably wear a mask and all that, but I also don't know if it gets any more rigidity than this does. Let's see. Let's see there. Here's our brake right here. Now this didn't quite line up, so I had to push it together. And I can't let go of that pressure until it cools a little bit. back here I just kind of like lightly rub it together let's see we'll have the seam here you can fill this this shouldn't be a problem there's this little bit here that didn't quite line up we'll fill this in and try to taper that correctly and it's not a huge a lot of extra work it is extra work and it won't ever look as good as if you um, got it all printed in one piece, but it be worse. So I'm just gonna take some, I've some leftover filament from one of my spools. Okay. This might be hard for me to show with one hand, but I figure how I can do this. So what we want to do, we're going to want to melt this into here. Sorry, 
I'm holding this at a very odd angle so you can see. When you do this, you're gonna wanna try to spread it past where you um, welded. Fill those in. Just make the plastic look like it's got a little bit more to it. I don't think you have to do this. It makes me feel better, but I don't know if it actually helps, to be honest. The inside of the helmet doesn't really matter, as long as it's not something that's going to be poking you and hurt you. But, you've got that, and you just want to continue the whole way where you filled in the seam there. Little at a time. Sometimes I like to tack the end too. I've been having some stranding problems with this printer. I don't know if you can see all this in here. Um, if you ever have that issue, if you just take a heat gun, and be careful about it, but just heat where the strands are, they'll shrivel up and melt real quick. And take care of most of that for you. You might get a couple of like uh, tits and stuff on the inside, but you can usually get those off with an X-Acto knife or something. But, let's see, that's all we want to do. Let's just try to make this a little stronger. Smooth it out a little bit. Again, ideally you probably have foam around this area. Maybe. Depends how this helmet fits. I don't know, this helmet looks kind of big. I mean, maybe not. I'm not sure. Let's see, here's some of this stranding. It's kind of like cotton. But, we'll get rid of it once we get this other part on. Okay. Now the other part we have, this little part for the front, uh, most important, I would say, is lining up any sort of detail lines you have, like these little indents here. You wanna make sure those look good. Everything else you'll make look good. Yeah, but trying to sand these in so it looks contiguous and all that can be a real pain so you want to make sure you get this front part as close to lined up as you can and then you'll make everything else just work And again, you're gonna have gaps. There's nothing you can really do about that. We'll fill them in. The epoxy putty, uh, blazing putty. Uh, you can even do Bondo if you're up to it. But, uh, but I'll just uh, weld the back of this, same way I did the other part, fill the rest of that in, and then we'll take a look at it. Okay, so there we go. It's all one piece. Back still fits nice. Got 
got a little gap in here. I went back and filled the back in with um, some plastic, as you saw. That's just so when you put uh, either epoxy sculpt or some spot putty or something, it doesn't just seep through. It's got something to have to hold back there also so you don't have a very thick later because it won't dry as well. But this should be okay. I'm going to remove the rest of these supports, get rid of the uh, stringing in there. Still got all the chin here. I kind of did that so it would be easier to stand up straight when I was doing this. But And then we'll fill in with either, haven't decided yet, thinking maybe some glazing putty, but we'll see. So that's next, gonna do that, and we'll see what it looks like. So I just filled in those gaps with some epoxy sculpt and then a little bit of spot putty over that. And then I just decided to hit it here with some 60 grit sandpaper, and we'll move over and do the whole helmet 100 grit. Then here I'm just adding a first coat of filler primer. And if that dries for about a week, I usually move on here to 200 grit sandpaper. Then after that, I move on here and we do the second coat of filler primer. I usually go pretty thick with this coat. And after that dries, it's time to move on to my favorite part, wet sanding. After we wet sand it, we're going to hit it here with the base coat of blue. Then we'll move on to the detailing. I'm just using a black acrylic marker to do the outlines and then fill it in with uh, brushed on black acrylic. just doing the visor outline with white acrylic. And if that all dries, we move on to the gloss coat here. And I do about two to three thick coats. Alright, still my messy workspace. I will clean it up one day, but that's not today. But we have Geki Blue, top coated, dried, and it's time we're gonna add the visor and the magnets and the elastic to hold it together. And she'll be finished. I think it turned out very nice. There's a little bit of a run on the back of the helmet, but overall, I'm happy with it. So hopefully it still looks good when we get everything else in.
is Gekki Ranger Blue finished. Really love how this turned out. Um, it's kind of a simple helmet. There's not a lot. You gotta, you know, detail wise. Uh, all that's up here is the black marks, pretty much in the white around the visor. I wish I did it around the visor a little better on this one side, but I think it turned out great. Uh, I had one little run in the back when I clear coated it, and I'm kind of bummed I didn't see it. I could sand it off and, you know, redo it, but you can't tell from here. And the back didn't line up quite right. I should have been paying more attention when I put the magnets in, so that's on me. Um, but this is a 3D Command Center print, and it's lovely. And uh, the other Geki Ranger helmet I made was uh, Geki Chopper or uh, Rhino Geki Ranger. I don't I don't know what the American uh, name for it is, but so this is uh, certainly a step up. Uh, I love this. I didn't like Geki Ranger when I was a kid. Um, for some reason, the suits without belts really made me feel uncomfortable. I don't know. But I recently just finished Gekki Ranger, and it is up there. It is fantastic. Uh, the villains are great. Uh, the mech is great. Even the side characters, like Xiao Fu and all that, they're wonderful. But definitely check out Gekki Ranger. Love how this helmet turned out. I would like to make Super Gekki Ranger helmets, or whatever their super mode is in um, the American version. Uh, with all the white, I think the white adds to these helmets. They're not boring per se, but they're plain. So the white just adds another whole dimension to it. I'd definitely would like to make a Super, super Gekki um, yellow at least. So maybe in the future, definitely want to make a Gekki Violet, because that helmet's just awesome. I, I don't know. I know it's kind of pretty much this helmet, but something about the purple white. Just delicious. But anyway, thanks for watching. Um, if you'd like to see more, please subscribe, um, like, comment. I try to answer all questions and PMs I get. And if there's something you'd like to see me make, let me know and I can try to make it happen. Thanks for watching.